So based on a number of suggestions on the previous videos, here's one more test. And it's a test to see which one of these connections is the best, or more importantly, which is the worst. And let me just point out each connection. Over here, we have one of these ideal inshore press-in connectors where you can just press the wire into the connector. Next to it, we have a Wago or Wago, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, connector of this type over here where you actually have a lever that you open, you put the wire in, and you close. Over here we have a standard run-of-the-mill wire nut, just like what was used in previous tests. And what I've done is I've twisted the wires together before fastening the nut on. Next, a slightly different wire nut, this type, which consists of a plastic housing which goes around a metal insert that has a screw that tightens against the wires. And the neat thing is the wires don't need to be twisted together. In fact, it doesn't recommend that you do that. Now over here, I have the same thing as in here, but without the cover. And the reason I made this big long connection is I'm actually transitioning from number 12 wire, which is over here, to number 15 wire, which is here and here. And the reason I've done that is it occurred to me we should test the push-in connectors on a 120 volt outlet. And these push-in connectors require number 14 wire. And conventional wisdom is that this is really a bad way of attaching wire to an outlet because these connections tend to fail. And we're going to see if that's true or not. And over here is another standard 120 volt outlet with number 14 wire and number 12 wire. And I've used the screws. And in theory, that is a much better connection than this connection over here. So what the whole idea is, is we're going to pass an ever increasing current through these wires and see which one fails first. There's a good chance that the number 14 wire here or here fails before any of the connectors. We'll have to see. Since this is number 12 wire, it's rated at 20 amps and all these connectors are rated to take that. So in theory, we should do 40 amps before any connector fails. And one more thing, we have a voltmeter here that is connected across our circuit to tell us, well, what the voltage is, and it should be very low, no more than a couple of volts, because this is essentially a short circuit until one of these things fails. And over here, we have a ammeter to tell us what the current is. So that's how we're going to do the test. And what we'll do is now start cranking up the current and see what happens. All right, so the weakest link test begins. Wasn't there a TV show of that name? I think there was. So the first thing we'll do is crank things up to 20 amps and everything should survive that without any problem. And yeah, we're getting about 0.35 volts across the, the circuit. No sign of any heat anywhere. I would be shocked if there was with relatively low current. So let's crank it up to 30 now and just see what happens. Here we go, 30 amps. So a 50% overload or even more for those 15 amp sockets. Slight detectable warmth on the cables. Certainly quite a bit more warmth on the number 14 cable rated for 15 amps and it's getting 30 amps so that's not a surprise. The number 12 20 amp cable is certainly much cooler but it's still warm. So let's crank it up to 40 amps now. I can hear the arc welder humming. I don't know if you can. 
So at 40 amps, we've got about three quarters of a volt. So it means we're dissipating 30 watts across here. So maybe about four watts per section. These wires are getting hot. Connectors don't feel too hot, but I think the plastic is insulating. Ooh, those wires are getting really hot. I got a whiff of a slight hot plastic smell. I'm not sure where it came from though. It is worth pointing out that 40 amps for five or more minutes is not unrealistic for a typical breaker. Depending on what its ratings and specs are, you could conceivably get twice the rated current. In other words, for a 20 amp breaker, 40 amps for up to half an hour. So everything in the circuit better be able to withstand that. We're at the five minute mark. These temperatures have all pretty much stabilized. So far, the connections that seem to be the coolest, whatever that means, are the MAR connectors. So I think we've reached thermal equilibrium, so I think we'll crank it up to 50 amps now. I can smell a plasticky smell, so something is not happy. There we go, 50 amps now. That's certainly quite hot. Ooh, that one's really hot. It's, yeah, this one is clearly quite a bit hotter than that one. This one certainly is cooler than the first two. In a very scientific measurement with my fingers. This one may be slightly warmer than that one, but it's really hard to say. That seems quite a bit hotter, but again, I'm touching the metal directly. Oh, these things are too hot to touch now, so the inside of this plug is really getting warm. Those are also too hot to touch. And I think we'll let it sit here for five minutes as well, just to see how it all holds up. It is worth pointing out that the number 14 wire is certainly discoloring now. It's getting so hot, whereas the number 12 wire in most cases, if not all cases, is still nice and shiny, so it's clearly much cooler. We're at the five minutes at 50 amp point. This connector's hot. This one's really hot. This one I can still touch for any length of time. This one's somewhat warmer. And those screws are just way too hot to touch. Oh, I think I see a failure. Yes. This plastic is melting here. Let's take a close up. So I'm going to hold this with one screwdriver. What you can see is the plastic here is clearly melting as it is over here. In fact, this whole metal assembly is now movable. The plastic all around is clearly liquefying. So this outlet has clearly failed at this point at just over 55 amps. Not surprising, its connectors are rated at 15 amps, but it's really quite telling that so far, everything else, even if it's hot, is surviving. So this is a great example of why these stick-in connectors are not nearly as good as the screw-on ones, because both these things are rated at 15 amps, yet this one has failed and this one is still in, well, what looks like good shape. So let's try 60 amps. This looks awfully hot around here. These two wires are discoloring. It sort of would indicate that it's getting pretty hot in here. How are these connections? Hot, hot, amazingly cool. I could touch this for any length of time. Uncomfortable, but I also could touch it for any length of time. Well, I'm not going to even try and touch that or that. How's this plastic? 
in very good shape. Well, let's crank it up to 65. Oh, I'm beginning to see a whiff of smoke from here, so not surprising. You see that smoke? It may just be barely visible to the camera. Let's be daring and increase it to 70 amps. Certainly something to be said for this plastic that it hasn't actually caught fire yet. At 70 amps, the ideal insure connector is certainly discoloring now, and I can see some discoloration on the wire. How does it feel? Oh, it's getting soft and way too hot to touch. How is the Wago connector? It's doing better than the ideal connector. I think it's getting soft, but it's not nearly as soft as this one. In fact, this one now, the plastic has separated. This is now finally getting too hot to touch for any length of time. And this one even more so. How's the plastic here? Oh yeah, it's beginning to melt now. So it took quite a few more amps to melt this connection than this connection. So right now the winners are these three, the Wago, the standard wire nut or MAR connector, and this slightly fancier wire nut type connector um, called Maret. And this really has a nice feature that you can use it with wires that are not twisted together if you are operating in a confined space, much like these two have that feature. Oh, look at this. This has now completely failed. So the plastic here has completely failed and melted off, as you can see. Interestingly, the metal clip is still forming a good connection. How's the Wago doing? Oh, it's really hot. Is it at all deformed? Oh, it's plastic is now, yeah, it's beginning to melt. Oh, and it just failed. Hope the camera got that and I just touched it to make it connect again. So at this point, I think we can declare a winner, which is the Maret connector over here with the regular wire nut or MAR connector coming in second, but it should be noted that the wires are twisted together before putting on the wire nut, and the Wago connector came third. I really wouldn't hesitate using any of these in a practical application other than perhaps these push-in connectors at the back of a socket, because all sockets, at least in North America, are equipped with screws which are clearly so much better and only take slightly more time. In spite of the fact that these two push-on or lever style connectors didn't do as well as the wire nuts or bar connectors, I'm still very impressed with how they held up to way greater overcurrents than they should ever be subjected to. I think the Wago would be the one of choice if you were making a connection that you knew might have to be altered in the not too distant future because the levers make it so easy to remove a wire or to add one later on. Something that's really quite a pain with the wire nut style connectors. And these ones also would be just great in an application where one is in a confined space. Maybe a wire was cut too short and you need to connect something to it and well this would do the job. Just make sure you have good circuit breakers. So I guess maybe at this point it might be fun to just put the full might of the arc welder across it again and see what happens. Well, not surprising. Most of the activity was around here. This 15 amp receptacle with the push-in connectors being used failed spectacularly, as did the number 14 wire, which really was the weakest link in this chain of number 12 wire. Also a bit of activity around here. Not surprising considering the connector had completely lost its covering. 
What we should do is inspect the Moret connector and the wire nut since they are the two most successful survivors. The wire nut or plain old Mar connector, well there's certainly a bit of melting here and you know the connection survived pretty well. The wire is reasonably clean. I don't know if you can see it but the wire springy thing inside here seems to have survived very well. So that's very impressive. And let's look at this one. Can I even unscrew it? So I just managed to get this loose. It seemed to give. So let's look inside. Wow, it survived incredibly well. Bit of discoloration on the wire here, but it looks brass. I wonder if somehow with all the incredible heat, some of the brass from the connector got onto the wire, but very good shape. So the final conclusion is you cannot beat wire nut type connectors. As old as they are and as low tech as they are, they stand up to an incredible beating and overcurrent and survive amazingly well. So with the simplicity and cost and excellent performance of wire nuts, they really should remain the most common form of electrical connection for things like household wiring. Well, that brings this video to an end. See you next time.